Well, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I want to uh, speak of one topic which is important when one considers the reconstruction of an organ like the crinal organ. What do we need to do such a reconstruction? We need, if possible, some remnants. We have some nicely carved pieces of wood. I know from Luc that you discovered that the attics of the church have a few other organ pieces, but that's little. We have texts, archival and commentaries, and Gilbert Huygens commented the most important treatise on the construction of the organ, which raised as many question marks as it brought us information. How does one read this text? How does one understand it? And how do, does one interpret it? Is a question. And then there is a third kind of, event of evidence, and that is iconographical evidence. I would like to replace the word testimonies by evidence. We have two kinds of evidences. Artistic evidences, like paintings, engravings, lithographs, and photographic evidences. And we'll divide my lecture in two. I will talk about the photographic evidences, which are, of course, the most important for us because they are a testimony of a certain reality of the organ, whereas artistic evidences are always somewhat interpretations. I hope one day, I hope to still be there, but I hope one day there will be a fourth panel to this triptych. The Crino organ, the Crino organ in 1944, and the place of the Crino organ as you saw it today in the church. Hopefully, we will come back to that situation with a new organ in a few years. Well, the oldest representation of the organ is a painting by Hendrik II van Steenweg. His dates are around 1580 to 1649, and he worked with Franz II Franken 1581-1642. It's the interior of the St. Peter's Church in Leuven, and this painting is kept in the Royal Museum of Arts in Brussels. It's reproduced in, I will call it, Peters 2022. Peters 2022 is a book of which Gilbert Eubens is the general editor. It's a fascinating book. It's very rich in information. The organ occupies what it must occupy, that is five pages out of a 300 pages book, because the church is a, is a treasure of architecture and art. And if you have a chance, you, you can buy it. I, I recommend it strongly. And in the pages concerning both the organ and the church, you can find a reproduction of this painting, which is dating dated 1634. Why 1634? Because this is zooming on the organ. You see here a choir organ. So, this choir organ is difficult in English because choir organ means the keyboard and our organ has a choir organ, a choir keyboard. Choir, chayer, chayer, chair, same word. I think Johann Zoldendijk will come back to that. The choir organ was dismantled, we know that by archives, in 1634. When, so the painting showing the organ, it dates from before 1634. And in 1634, this organ was dismantled and reused partially to improve 
improvement is a question, to enlarge the crinal organ by a real second keyboard. Some pipes were moved to the crinal organ. So this is the painting. And oh. thanks to Gilbert Huygens again, he made a reconstruction starting with the painting of Van Steenweg and cutting the organ in two, reproducing the other half, making the choir organ not disappear. So he gave a possible disposition of the organ, the Grinot organ, before 1634. This could be a base of discussion. So in other words, we do not have a painting of the Grinot organ. Not a painting that we could use, of course. This is another painting that is at the Museum M, here in Leuven. A painting by Wolfgang de Smet. His dates are 1617-1685. Interior of Leuven St. Peter's Church, 1667. It's dated. You don't see the organ, but if you zoom, You see an important part of the organ. When you see the painting, it's barely seeable. But when you zoom, thanks to technology, you distinguish the door, the, the right side door, to the organ. Now, this allows us to judge the quality, the scientific quote, quality of such a document. It's obvious that the upper size of the door does not correspond to what we know of the Pinot organ. It, it, it's not the, the real door to the Pinot organ. So either it is something else, which is doubtful, or it's an artistic view of what the painter saw, who was not painting this beautiful tableau, painting for us to reconstruct the trinial organ. That was not in his mind. We come to the 19th century and we discover quite a few documents. The first one is not a painting, it's a lithograph, <coughs> lithography by Louis Hage, in a book called Sketches in Belgium and Germany, published in London in 1840. Here you see the bottom of the positive and the balcony. And what we know of the balcony from the photos, which you will see in a moment, it is pretty accurate. This is an, ex an, an excerpt of a painting by Joseph Masrins, you might ask yourself why is it black and white if it's a painting? Well, the painting belonged to Victor de Munter, who was the first conservator of the conservator of, of the Museum of Leuven before it was named M. And uh, at that time it was the Van der Keelen Mechtens Museum. Uh, and the painting is now lost and only known by a black and white photo of the time. Well, you see the organ on an interesting angle for ourselves because it's from the, the side nave. Mostly, from now on, the organ will be an appendix to the, to the broad screen. The, the, the screen, the jubé, as we say in French, is the main interest of engravers, painters and photographers. And the organ appears on the side. Joseph Maswins, oh, ah. <coughs> Joseph Maswins painted this interesting <coughs> view <coughs> where you see the organ in the back, you see a procession, and uh, this painting has an interesting story. It was acquired a few weeks ago by somebody on this table. <laughs> <laughs> St 
Stroband is a well-known maker of lithographies, lithographer, and he published a book in 1854, Le Brabant et les Flandres, Monuments d'Architecture and de Sculpture. And as you can see, he depicts the screen and the organ is in the back. But when you zoom, you have a fair description of the organ, though it's not, not clear enough to draw conclusions of or to use it as an organ building evidence. Masvis again. And this one, look, we missed, both of us, we missed it. It was sold in Germany in 2022 for the ridiculous amount of 700 euros. We missed it. Yeah. And here is another mass fees. This was sold in 2000. I don't know the date of which it was sold. It's a painting dated, dated 1866, and it was, it was sold in London at Bonhams. So we have four drawings by Maslins. What is interesting is that Maslins was uh, the student, the pupil of a well-known, much better known than him, painter named Genisson. Genisson painted interior of churches with organs of most, almost every important church and organ in Belgium. But we have not found any painting by him depicting the organ of St. Peter's. So maybe in another auction. <laughs> in the 2022 book by Peters, there is this drawing which belongs to Gilbert Huygens, who has a rich collection. Uh, it's a, an interesting drawing, but almost unusable for our purpose, which is to collect information of the organ. It's, it's a drawing, it's an impression, but it's a beautiful document. Another source which I expected to use was this famous book of 1883 by Hill, depicting organ cases of Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Great Britain, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, and Switzerland. It has 38 plates, engraved plates, in Volume 1, and 36 plates in Volume 2. So it makes more than 70 drawings of organ at a time where TGV and planes were not usable. So figure the, the amount of traveling and, and of, of work he did for drawing all these. Unhappily, there is no Leuven. Yes, there is a trace of Leuven. As you can see, in the middle of Belgium there, there stands uh, three lines on Leuven, where he says it has an interesting case. That makes us very happy, but <laughs> it's not very useful. <laughs> Strangely enough, in 1982, look, you forgot to, say, to tell them that, I published a book on early postcards. And what is on the cover of this book? <laughs> the Organ of Leuven, which I chose out of 24, I presented 24 organs in early postcards. And I chose this one because it was the most beautiful, the most speaking, the most beautiful organ case, I suppose and most speaking postcards. We will come to postcards very soon. I am very proud to have convinced Gustave Leonard to write a one page of introduction to that book. I would never have thought that he would have done it, but he did it. Postcards are the first evidence, in historical, chronological order, the first kind of evidence we can use, and they are very seldom used. It's an important source. I, I have gathered an important collection of Belgian postcards, probably 300 organs, and over 2,000 French organs. 
And since postcards were, quote, invented in 1871, at least in Belgium, they bring us photos of organs which were destroyed during the First World War, and if they had a chance to survive the First World War and were destroyed in the Second, we still have photos. And so postcards are important testimonies. And uh, one way to date postcards is, this is the oldest postcard I have. It dates from 1903, the middle one. I, you, you see nothing of the organ, but it's the screen once again. But uh, one way of dating postcards, when the back is full like that, and you use the address on the back, and you may not write on the back. So people write on the image if there is room, if they want to send a message. Sometimes they send a postcard, that's enough. And it's only in 1903 that the back of the postcard becomes divided and can be used for text on the left and address on the right. So 1903 is a time limit. If you have a postcard with a full back, it dates from before 1903. This is one of the most complete view I have of the, the organ. And once again, it's the screen that is the, the topic. The organ is there. I mean, they couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> Another photo of the screen, and here I show it to you because, nevertheless, it has an information for us. You see, under the tribune of the positive, you see a metal support <coughs> entering the wall. And I'm sure in the wall where the metal was entering the wall, but there is a support to the gallery. That's a little hint that doesn't make us solve the problem of the mixture. <laughs> and this is the, the picture that is on the, the cover of the book. As you can see, to the left of the organ there is a gigantic altar which is not there anymore. I cannot... well, I, I will wait until I show you a, a photo from the front of the organ. Let's forget about postcards. There are many postcards of the Leuven St. Peter's, but a few are interesting for our topic. What is interesting, on, on the other hand, is the collection of photographs held by the, I speak French now, IRPA, Institut Royal du Patrimoine Artistique, the Flemish colleagues call it KIKIRPA, Koninklijke Institut voor Kunst Patrimonium, and IRPA. Uh, it's an interesting and imposing collection of iconographic and all other sources of information and they are very helpful. When you ask them something, you get an answer and you even sometimes get the cliché by mail. This is the oldest photo of their collection. Oops. It dates from then they told me 1953. Nobody reacts? Yes. Okay, <laughs> impossible. So I told the lady at the IRPA, listen, it can be 1953. She said, it's written. I said, yes, but it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then she made, she made an inquest. And finally, it is a reproduction of a photo made by the Königlich Preußische Messbildanstalt. <laughs> they reported on our patrimonium, and this is a very uh, uh, early photo of, but once again, the organ is barely seawall. An important source of information is this publication by Van der Muren. He made uh, a big book, this is a big book, published in 1928. But, so, the photos in there could be dated before 1928. But, Van der Muren published 
in On the Kunst, a few years before, in 19... 20 years? No. The previous one was 31, Jean. Ah, yeah. thank you. The previous was 31. Thank you, Peter. 1928 is the date we will keep in mind because this earlier publication contains some of the photos. Now, those photos have a strange history. At that time, one didn't have a telephone to make photos. And they were made by on glass. So the negative was a piece of glass, very breakable. And for one reason or another, the collection of glass plates of Van der Muren belong to me. I don't know how they came. I know... <laughs> but, but they, they are in my cellar. I know it's, it's Marc Luridan, who was an organ builder, who gave them to me. Uh, I don't know what he thought if they were better in my place than this. And so I have these photos on glass plates. Some of those photos are, they are all of an excellent quality. They are beautiful and they are artistic. Uh, this is a glass plate, but it was published in his book, so you know it if you have read it a little bit. But I can show you, this is uh, zoomed by himself. So he zoomed on some, some of his photo for the book. And I also received very recently <laughs> from another organ specialist, a collection, the collection, of the photographs by van der Muren that he owned. So not the glass plate, but the, the prints of the photographs, and even cut around as they are in his book. So I have a, an, an interesting collection of van der Muren documents there. Um, This is an example of a piece of cardboard where he glued two photos and gave them number. And I have not had time to do that, but one day maybe I will take the two collections, the documents, the, the glass plates, the documents, and bring them together. Because the number of the plates that he wrote here are not the number of the plates in his book. So, there are at least three states. <coughs> there you see the positive, but it's not very clear. You see the other part of the positive, which is the part which you saw in the church. This is a very interesting photograph. One person to whom we owe a lot, all of us, is Jean-Pierre Félix. He published hundreds of articles. And he published in his Mélange d'Organologie no, number two, he published an article on Les Photodogues de Floris van der Muren. And he, at that time, had access to glass prints. So probably Marc Leridan lent them to him, and he made prints. And this is one print. It's a fairly unknown photo, I, I, I think. Even Mr. Herbens has not seen it, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's an interesting photo because it shows the size, the side of the organ. You see the uh, registers, you see the pedal, which is not uh, obviously the pedal of Crino, and it gives a, an interesting view. Van der Muren again before 1928, Van der Muren again, before 1928. This is an interesting view, unknown to by most people. It's a glass plate, so it's not published in his book. It's never been published. It's a view of the positive, but you see that the organ has lost his pipes, his front pipes. The front pipes are probably the lowest probably to date the, the photo from 1931 when the last transformation of the organ took place uh, but nothing else allows us to date the plate. 
Now, something important is this. This is a photo of the Rue positive, a glass plate, zoomed on the positive. On the left, I wrote in modern Flemish, because the book of Van der Muren is written in Old Flemish, and the translator wouldn't read Old Flemish, so I had to translate it into modern Flemish to have it translated in, into English. And there he says that he saw the date 1634 on top of the positive, on top of the center tower of the positive at the Kronwerk. Now, I zoomed myself on his photo and I show you that I can see the 1634 date and nobody has been able to see it. Maybe in the, in the remnants in the attic of the church, but he is the only one to say that he saw it. <laughs> and this, it is because of him that we say that 1634 is, is the last known date of the Crino organ before it was transformed, of course. Another glass plate, very interesting, 1631 probably too, because the, the facade of the outlet, uh, of the grate is down. Uh, it is during the, the works by Firma Joris. This photo has been published by Jean-Pierre Félix. And then we come back to Ichba, because they are the best quality photographs. They are made, you know, taking the time to find a good light, find a good position. This is a good one, but I even prefer another one that will come. This is a 1942. The organ has still two years to live. This is 1943. One year to live. <laughs> Chronique d'une mort annoncée. <laughs> there you can distinguish the typical round exterior tower, which is not a tower, but it's not a platform either. It's a typical kind of structure which we French speaking call the buffet liégeois, which our Flemish colleagues will call the Walloon, is it the, so? The Walloon uh, kind of organ. Anyway, there are a few examples of these round exterior parts of the facade, and they are all related to Liège. Like the organ in Canast comes from Liège, it has that. The organ in Kirk is also, at least from the organ builder, from the Liège region. And one could make, one could write a little article, on, if it has not been done yet, on this very typical kind of organ case. Here come two photos which raise questions for me, at, at least. They are from the IRPA. They are the left side and the right side of the balcony of, of the positive. And the comment on uh, one article, a very good article published in the very good journal uh, Orgelkunst, uh, they say that one can see that he has been reworked. I don't see it. I, I honestly don't see something abnormal. Of course, here the left side is wider than the, uh, larger than the right side but I don't see any trace or cut <laughs> or binding up. Anyway, this is discussion to hold on the basis of the photos. And this is the other side, same thing. This, you know, from this afternoon. And this is, for me, the best photo. It's best because it's very well framed, very well cadré. It's symmetrical. It's, and when you zoom on it, you see that it has what we call in French, I don't know how it is in English or Flemish, définition. It's, it's, there are lots of dots, lots of pixels. <laughs> it's very clear. 
Finally, this photo, which I uh, borrow from the Huygens book, and which belongs to Gilbert Huygens, that the demolished organ, it's sad to know that the bombs were not German. They were allies. <laughs> <laughs> and to conclude, here is three photos I made in 2024. You saw this this afternoon. You see the place where the two big beams supporting the tribune and supporting the organ were. You see on the side of the screen the passage which was leading to the organ tribune. This is little information and you see the, the part that is concerned. And the last image of my show is the one I always put at the end of a PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs>